Okay, so um, this, is a, this is a kind of a, a really good opportunity for me because it, often the case when I stand up and sort of address conferences or stuff like that, I mean, you've all been to them and you've kind of got, got a few things you've got to get through. But um, this time I had a chat with, with Ian and I had a chat with, with Adrian and they said, no, you just kind of come and talk about something you're interested in and, you know, there's a, something to do with the past and, and you know, thinking about that, which is, which is absolutely fantastic. So what I'm going to sort of share with you today is... Um, a question that sort of I've been thinking about for, for a little while, and it does relate to our understanding of the past, but the reason I'm interested in it is really to try and understand the future, which I think you'll, you'll get to later on in the day. Um, I'm trying to be, going, to be, going to try and be very good with time, so I'll, I'll romp through this stuff. But obviously, I, the other thing I like about this particular kind of conference and this kind of, this kind of format is that, for me, a lot of it's about our understanding... Um, what you guys are interested in, in hearing about from, from BBC R&D and, and about this question itself. Which brings me on to the, the first point, which is this is a, a kind of an ongoing project for me. Um, it started in 2008 um, when we were sort of trying to kind of work out what to do with the Future Media Group in, in the BBC and what to do with the BBC in, in, in an odd way. Um, and I felt that actually uh, you know, the, 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 the key thing was the question, what is broadcasting? So I, like many other people, kind of wander around with iPhones and phones and obviously it all ends up in a notebook, yeah, because you never quite get around to kind of putting it into any of the electronic devices or they haven't got batteries. So I've got a bunch of these notebooks at home and they're full of all sorts of rubbish. But every now and again, there's a little star and it means that I've sat down next to someone and said, what do you think broadcasting is? Because I think the word is quite interesting. So before today, I went off and I kind of went through them all um, and pulled out all the different uh, quotes that have come together. Now, I'm not very scientific about this, so there's only one that's kind of attributed. There's two others that I'm pretty sure who said, but I can't exactly remember when or where, and the rest are probably so brutally paraphrased that they wouldn't, wouldn't, people wouldn't want them attributed to them anyway. So you have to bear with me, but imagine this as the kind of collective conscience of the people I've seen in the last two, two years or so telling me what they think broadcasting is, and then you can tell me what you think it is as well. Um, so, why is the question interesting? Well, for me, um, the, the media industries, particularly kind of those concerned with the role of the BBC, and et cetera, are kind of obsessed by kind of self-referential reflection. And a lot of, a lot of sort of talk is, is, is a, lot, a lot of the, those conversations around what should the BBC here to be, be here to do, and obviously something that I'm very passionate about and very close to my heart. But we kind of all get the British bit, though, of course, these days it's all about being global as well, so that's slightly contested, but broadly speaking, you know where you stand with that. You kind of get the corporation bit, um, but again, you know, we've got a kind of commercial subsidiary, and that's quite confusing as well, but actually, we, we kind of get that bit. But the, the thing about the word broadcasting is I don't think people really know what that means anymore, but I'm also convinced that if you could understand what you mean by broadcasting, or if you could reinterpret it or reown that term, it would probably solve a lot of the problems that people seem to have with the other two letters. So back in 2008, there was a big debate about the BBC, and that's why I felt that, you know, actually people were asking, to a certain extent, the wrong question. The other thing that was happening back then, and actually has been happening for a number of years, and I've been involved in sort of various initiatives, certainly BBC R&D is still very much interested in mobile broadcasting. And mobile broadcasting was interesting because it was the thing that was sort of most different to what happened before and was really challenging, you know, what that word means. I, I was trying to get all the different mobile broadcasting standards on one line. There are so many. The, the joke in the industry is that there's more standards than there are live services. We will get there, and it will be fantastic and exciting. It'll be one of the things that changes broadcasting. But again, that was going on when I was thinking about this stuff. Wednesday, the 29th of September, 2009. Will it be remembered as, a, as a, an epoch-defining date? It is the date by which someone somewhere wrote a report and managed to get enough press coverage to get it out there uh, that... Uh, online advertising in the UK as a kind of sum of money exceeded uh, TV advertising. Um, obviously, when you're looking at broadcasting more broadly than the, than the BBC, that's kind of an important thing. Um, but I also think it's kind of it's misunderstood as well, which is the last point on this slide. Typewriters are interesting. Um, I, I've got this view that actually new technologies very rarely replace old technologies. So everyone's going, yeah, you know, online advertising is bigger than TV advertising, TV's over, broadcasting's dead, it's all about internet. Well, actually, the only technology I've, I've ever really been able to think of that was completely superseded by a subsequent technology was the typewriter. You know, I really haven't seen anyone use a typewriter for years and years, and, and that's completely gone. But generally speaking, new technologies complement a previous technology in some way, and they're combined to deliver something quite interesting that wasn't there before. So, 
Wednesday the 29th of October is interesting, but I think it's interesting in the sense that it was... Uh, sorry, 29th of September. It, it was, it's interesting in the sense that it's a moment where these two new worlds are coming together and there's going to be this new symbiosis, some kind of balance and something new will be created for it. Not because one kind of advertising is suddenly larger than, than, than one that's been around for a bit longer. So, I find the question interesting. You may or may not, but, but I'm, I'm just going to continue to try and get to the bottom of it. But... I had some help in, in terms of where do you start, and um, this is a, a quote by a guy called Edward Pauley, who worked in uh, the BBC Engineering Division uh, many years ago, and he wrote a book called uh, BBC Engineering 1927 to 1957, I think, or 1922 to 1952. Um, it's also known within BBC R&D as the Bible, because it's crap that, that thick, and it tells you absolutely everything you need to know about anything to do with broadcasting from an engineering perspective. Um, up until till the, the, the 50s, the late 50s. Um, so, um, this, this beginning, the beginning of this, uh, this quote is the kind of technical definition. It's the engineering definition. Um, a service using electromagnetic waves of frequency lower than 300 gigahertz, propagating space without artificial guide for transmitting sound, television, or other types of transmission intended for direct reception by the public. I'm not going to read out all the quotes, but this is the, the starting one, the lodestone. Um, but actually, Edward Pauley was an incredibly insightful engineer, and he understood that it was more than just, a, strictly speaking, a, a, technical, a technical definition. Um, and he actually understood broadcasting as, as a kind of a system. Um, so he, kind of, he, he suggested in his book that you should advance that, that, that definition to be something slightly more complex. And by that, he means actually it's almost as much about how the programs get made as when they're distributed. And actually, that forms something to do with... Uh, the relationship with, with media that people have. So it's kind of similar to what J.J. Abrams was saying in that it's about, um, it, it's about the, the tools that you use to, to make, uh, to make the, the, the media. Um, I should say I've actually got the, the title of the book wrong. It's up to the 70s. Edward Pauley's book covers a period of 50, 50 years. Um, I think that's kind of interesting today. We've got a, a, a tape based production system in, in that the, the R&D have been working on. It, it does literally change the way programs are made and change the way that programs are then distributed. Paulie goes on to say that actually, and he begins to kind of drive towards the other things that are, are, are important about broadcasting. Um, he talks about it, 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 uh, it, it, the, the, the function of broadcasting as being the kind of classic thing that we at the BBC like to understand is as informing, educating, and entertaining. But he understands it as a, as a social purpose. And so he kind of describes it as a, as a means of publication. Um, and he sees that as something that is, is defined as, uh, is in some way innate in the, in the sense of broadcasting, this thing that we have this relationship with, or at least have in the last century. I think in sort of trying to kind of drive away from the necessarily... Um, technical description, the engineering description, the technical truth, the bit that you can really get your teeth into. He's saying something about broadcasting being uh, an act of government almost. It, it's something that was recognized very early on as being incredibly powerful and therefore potentially dangerous or potentially good. And so actually, since then, there's a whole bunch of people, and this is going to give you a kind of insight of the kind of people I end up sitting next to, but there's a whole bunch of them that would, would be considered from that kind of policy world. Um, the policy prescription, the idea that something's sick and it needs fixing, um, but certainly uh, there's different views about this. It, it, if you want to become a broadcaster, you have to promise to do certain things. You have to try and move that relationship, that media, as a force for good rather than a, a force for evil. Um, of these, uh, I think you know, people understand that there's a sense that it somehow deepens democracy, informs society, and changes the relationship people have between each other. Um, there's the other idea that actually public service broadcasting kind of raises the overall quality bar. I'm not sure that's true now. I think the democratization of production probably does as much to raise the overall quality bar as anything else. Um, and plug plugging gaps in content supply. These are all quite contested and quite, quite, uh, quite problematic. I'll leave them there as, as inspiration. Um, the next kind of group of people that you end up sort of asking this question to are the people who make programs. And that kind of drives towards something that actually the policymakers also understand is that actually the, the intrinsic social value, this thing that Pauli understood and hinted at, um, is in some ways related to the actual individual programs as well. But we've kind of we've got a bit of a we've got a bit of a problem here. David Elstein is someone who comments commentates on this stuff. He appreciates it as a system, as a, as a kind of a but not in a, not in a technical sense, but in in the sum of all these programs. And he kind of goes on to say that actually considering them broadcasting as being something that you can narrow down into an individual program as as something quite difficult to get people to understand. So 
this is some, I, I don't know who told me this, um, and I can't remember, but they were saying that actually, um, if you need to understand, re-understand broadcasting, and you're thinking about it in, as, as a, as a, from a creative point, as, as something to do with the programs, it's about beginning to re-understand broadcasting, not as, as individual um, programs that kind of exist as kind of cultural uh, things that are broadcast once in these moments in time. But instead, we're almost in the process of creating products now. You know, programs don't just get broadcast and stop. They have blogs and people Twitter them. And actually, that's just the beginning. Sure, there's something even more creative we can do. And thinking about them as something that, that where the moment of transmission is the beginning of something rather than the end, I think has probably got something to do with the future broadcasting. What that means for this kind of overall content flow, I'm not quite sure. But again, it's, it's inspirational, and, and I, I find it quite interesting. It's part of the solution. So then, of course, involved in this industry, there are people who take a much more commercial view than, than the BBC does, though I think we're trying uh, and, and try and understand that view, the market mantra. I think this is what has happened in the past. You know, the, the golden age of telly, I, I think there's a very, I don't think it's a great phrase. I don't think it ever existed, to be honest with you, or at least it hasn't, hasn't yet, but it was regarded as sort of the 50s and 70s. And this is where broadcasting really fulfilled the, the vision of the people who started, and that's the idea that it's got something about critical mass, um, and that's what derives its original kind of market or, or commercial function. Is it's a way of kind of bringing attention all into one place, and then you can, as a trade-off, where you kind of provide a program, which kind of relates back to this concept of broadcasting as this creative process, um, but also you kind of slip in some advertising, and there's a whole, whole bunch of, of money that can be, be, uh, be married there. Now, the thing about this is that's kind of defined by scarcity in the sense that when there's only so much spectrum, you can, it's easy to aggregate the attention. And so is broadcasting something that is now no longer relevant because that scarcity is being eroded by people being able to distribute stuff on the internet or satellite, multi-channel television, et cetera, et cetera? Well, we're not sure, but are probably part of the dynamic. So this is where it gets to, to conversations I've had with people who kind of take a step back Probably people like, like yourselves in this, in this room. And actually, is it something much more to do with, uh, with the, the, the medium itself? Is it, it's not necessarily about the programs or the rules around the programs or even the technology that you can kind of point out and feel and, and, and touch. Um, but is it something about this kind of concept, this more abstract thing? One theory is that broadcasting is the sort of sum of all the people who come together to make a broadcaster. I quite like that idea. I think that actually people's personalities do come, come through in some mass organizational sense. Um, another kind of view is that actually it's got this, this thing about linearity, it's got this thing about um, it being continuous and maybe in this time of on demand that's becoming less, less uh, fashionable. But these are all kind of important characteristics of it as a medium rather than an individual program or a set of rules, etc. I think it's editorialized, it's about people having a view about what's important. Um, passive consumption is something that I'm not, I, th I don't think is great, but fundamentally it does appeal to a specific kind of human, uh, human desire. Um, is it pushed, is it linear, is it a channel? Exactly, all, all, all these kind of ideas. The, the, this was summed up by someone I asked in, in, about this question who wasn't in the media industries, and it was pretty simple, it says, it's when you can't pause it and you can't see your favorites. I mean, that I think had a completely different perspective about what broadcasting is, and probably <coughs> someone that uh, a lot of the audience here would be comfortable talking to. So, uh, the, the, this was also one of the periods that, that I was thinking about this was actually a time when uh, there was a kind of a fair amount of problems with trust in broadcasting. There'd been some problems with votes. There'd been various uh, presenters you know, causing, causing uh, outrage. But I did think that kind of was insightful in the sense that actually when, some, when, you are, when I asked some people, they kind of remembered a, a type of broadcasting that was perhaps softer and, had, and was in some ways displayed humility. Um, and someone who had a kind of a much more of a brand sort of Take, take on it in that it should be, it should be something that is, consumers are proud to be involved with. The implication here is that it's not one way and that actually it's a, something got, got more to do with something that's, that, that's two way, um, which kind of leads on to, to um, where, we're, where we're going with broadcasting. So fundamentally broadcasting should be something that brings people together and I think this is really where I think kind of my favorite definition comes from. Uh, James Pennell, I can quote him because it's in a speech. So he said, broadcasting is the forum where we all come together. And this is the bit I like, it's conducting the national conversation. And I think that for me, if I had to pick one of these quotes or one of these kind of conversations I had was the thing that kind of got me thinking, thinking the most. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll finish off and I'll just say what I think broadcasting is. And this is a work in progress, so I haven't finished this. 
But I think that it's one end of a pendulum swing. I think on-demand is on one end, and linear is on the other, and that we're in this correction from just having linear forms towards on-demand forms. But actually, it settles somewhere in the middle, going back to what I was saying about the 29th of September. Um, I think you can define everything about something to do with when, where, and who. In, in terms of when, I think broadcasting is about now-ish, sort of this week. I think it's quite immediate. Um, but also, you can see it as almost the second hand of history. In the information age, it's like that view into the second hand because you've got all this cultural activity happening all the time. Where? Well, it's going to be everywhere. It's going to be on every device. But also, it kind of exhibits this weird abstract kind of nowhere. It's this thing that happens separately. It's always going on whether or not you're watching or not. And who? Is it the many in the mirror? Is it this thing that we, we use to kind of throw a lens up to ourselves? Um, but, or is there something more intimate around twittering your, your favourite show with your friends? I, I, I don't know. Um, what will broadcasting be? Well, I think it will always be balanced between technical innovation or technical pursuits and editorial pursuits. And it's when those two things are in balance that it really works. I think broadcasting will become something part, part of something much larger, part of something that is combined with websites and other forms of, of creativity. But I think it will be a useful gateway into a lot of, all those, a lot of those other cultural experience. And maybe it will become the pulse of, of the nation in an information age. I do believe we're at this, this moment in history that changes. I'm going to take some questions, but I'll leave you with my, the final word from Edward Pawley. As I say, he's the man I immensely respect and, and, and made a, a massive contribution, not just whilst he was working with BBC Engineering, but also by documenting it in, in his book. Um, essentially, he says, it, you're very unwise to try and uh, define broadcasting, and it's quite a difficult thing to do. So I'll leave you with that work in progress, and uh, if I ever do come up with an answer, I'll come back and, and tell you. <laughs>